Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at how to most optimally use the TTL system of your flash in conjunction with or, or with the aperture priority feature of your camera. Now this works a little different for Nikon and Canon. So we're this this particular guide is just going to be for Canon cameras and we'll have a new guide coming up in a little while later for Nikon cameras. So as you can see, the first the, the things you need to know to, to, to be able to use this guide um, is to be able to control the exposure compensation of your flash or FEC which is this plus minus thing right here so you can see on this flash this is a 600 RT I can dial in negative or positive exposures with flash exposure compensation you should find this in your manual under FEC or flash exposure compensation right so this is the first step you need to be able to change this on your flash and almost not almost all TTL flashes have this have this ability the next important step is to make sure your camera is set for the aperture priority mode the reason why we set the camera to aperture priority is because in this case the camera will be able to control the shutter speed which will directly influence the camera's ability to control the ambient exposure versus the flash exposure. If you're not familiar with why shutter speed only affects ambient light but does not affect flash exposure, we put a link on the bottom of this video for you to have a look. That's a great reference if you're starting off with flash photography. So the important thing to remember first is that your camera is set to AV mode or A mode for Nikon and AV mode for Canon and that your flash has exposure compensation capability. The third part of this technique is being able to control the exposure compensation for your camera. Now it's important to note that the exposure compensation on your camera, in this particular case for this 5D Mark III, the exposure compensation is set by this wheel. You can see that I can dial in a negative 1 or positive 1 exposure compensation. Now the important thing to note is that this is completely different from flash exposure compensation which you saw earlier. It's a combination of this exposure compensation and flash exposure compensation in a program mode like AV mode or an automatic mode like AV mode that will enable us to quickly control the ratios of ambient light and flash exposure to get the best results. Okay, so here's the setup that will demonstrate this particular technique. Um, as you can see, I have the subject, which is the lens, um, and a remote flash, which is set up in TTL. Now, the technique works whether you use a remote flash, as I have this one set up. This is an SB600 being fired via radio triggering. And the same principle also applies to an on-camera flash. Now please remember the technique again that the technique I'm about to show you is only relevant for Canon cameras. The way Nikon cameras TTL behaves is pretty dramatically different from what you're about to see. So we are going to make another video for Nikon. Now, as you can see, I have the flash set up pointing straight at the lens and my camera is set for AV mode as mentioned earlier. The exposure compensation on the camera is set to zero and all I'm going to do now is take a sequence of three or four shots with a plus one, a minus one, a plus two and minus two on exposure compensation on the camera, not on the flash. And you'll be, you'll be easily able to see the effect that the, the, that the camera, the exposure compensation on the camera has on the image. Okay, so here's our first shot at zero EV on camera. Here's our second shot at minus one EV on camera. You can notice that the camera has changed only the shutter speed. Minus two EV on camera. plus one 
and plus 2. And as you can see from the results that changing the exposure compensation on the camera only changes the level of the ambient light. It does not change the value of the flash. That's the beauty of the TTL system. In the case of the TTL system, the light from the flash will be maintained at a constant level while using exposure compensation on the camera is going to change just the ambient light reading by varying the shutter speed. As a second part of the demonstration, I'm going to show you what happens when you change the exposure compensation on the flash but not the exposure compensation on the camera. So what you see here is the Canon ste 3 remote triggering system. This is slaved to my, this is the master and the SB600 that you see there. That is slave to this system. So what I'm going to do is take a shot at zero exposure compensation on the flash. Please remember that at this point in time, the exposure compensation on the camera is set to zero. So you can see those readings here. Now, I'm going to take a shot. This will be the same as the first photo we took when we were changing exposure compensation on the camera. And now I'm going to change the exposure compensation for the flash. I'm going to set this to minus two. So you can see the effect, it will be pretty dramatic. I'm going to take a photo again. And now bring it back to zero. So as you can see, changing the exposure compensation on the flash obviously does not change the overall exposure, it only changes, it doesn't change the ambient exposure, it only changes the value of the, the output of the flash. By using exposure compensation on camera and exposure compensation on the flash, you can control the level of the ambient light as well as the flash output independently. Thank you.